Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition. There we go. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Thank you. Uh, I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we're a webinar, a webcast, an online show. Uh, the terminology is up for debate to some people. Um, and nobody's ever come up with what they want to call these things or what they like to call these things. But whatever you call us, we are here live every Wednesday morning online at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but we do record the show, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You guys go to our website later and watch any of our recordings. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where all those recordings are that you can see. Um, we post a recording of the show onto the Commission's YouTube account. Um, if there are any presentations, like we have slides here today, documents, handouts, anything that is included um, in the presentation, we have, share those as well. And any websites that are mentioned, we collect into our delicious account for bookmarking websites and give you all those together as well. So you have everything you need after the show um, to watch it again. Um, the, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your um, colleagues, uh, friends, neighbors, family, anybody you think you may be, um, be interested in any of the topics that we have, um, they're welcome to join us on Wednesdays or to watch any of our recordings. Um, we do have recordings, uh, Encompass Live started in 2009, and we do have all of our recordings going back that far on the website still. Um, some of the information, of course, could be outdated at this point, but you know, we are librarians, so we archive things. <laughs> uh, but um, so for historical purposes, purposes, things are all there. Um, go ahead and check out what we have. Um, and we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of software products and services. Uh, basically, our only criteria is that it is something library related. Uh, something libraries are doing, a uh, service that we think they might be able to use, um, something um, that might be um, important of interest to them, something they might want to partner with, um, events happening. Um, some of our topics, when you look at the titles, you might wonder, libraries, what? But trust me, everything comes around to libraries in the end. That's my only criteria is that you have to have something to do with libraries to, to be on our show. Um, we do have a Nebraska Library Commission staff that come, sometimes come on the show and do Nebraska-centric things or things that we're doing here at the Commission. But we also do a bring on guest speakers, which we have this morning, as you can see from our slides, too, here. Um, to my left here is Linda Reddish, who is an extension educator um, from um, UNL Extension Offices, University of Nebraska, for those of you who are not Nebraska people. And you're out of, um, from a... Um, Douglas County, right? Uh, Douglas County, yep, yeah. officially. That's where I'm housed, but um, I have a statewide appointment. Okay, great. So, officially up just near Omaha area, but we'll, we'll go anywhere. Yeah, I'll <laughs> go anywhere. And um, she reached out to me about doing this presentation. This is something about, as you can see, the topic here today co parenting for successful kids, um, a program that our University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension offices has. And um, it's a great program, with the, and I'm going to have to explain it, of course, um, but specifically wanting to partner with some li libraries to mm -hmm. um, get some of this information out, and um, which is what libraries do. We work yeah. with children and teens and on all sorts of things. So I will just hand it over to you, Thanks. Linda, to go ahead and take it away. Well, uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning, too, and expressing your interest in learning a little bit more about what is co-parenting for successful kids and uh, possibly discussing some opportunities here to um, blend the work uh, around co-parenting for successful kids. Um, uh, I'm pretty passionate <clears throat> about uh, our, our local libraries and utilize them all the time. With, uh, I have a three-year-old son who is uh, turning into a pretty ferocious reader, so <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, we were actually uh, there last night checking out books again. So, awesome. um, so I spent lots of time there, and it was actually while I was there with our son um, checking out books that I sort of had a moment going, hmm, I wonder if this would be an opportunity to reach out to um, our, our local libraries, but really think about the statewide because I was sitting with our son and we were reading books and I just was looking around thinking uh, from the perspective of our co-parenting uh, for Successful Kids program and wondered 
if parents or family or children um, were interested, so we'll talk a little bit more about what is co-parenting for successful kids, but where this, this idea sort of originated is co-parenting is for parents who are in the process of separating or divorcing or in that transition of um, moving into co-parenting. And so um, it can be a pretty stressful time, you know, uh, even if the separation is amicable, it's still pretty stressful. Uh, but the part of me when I was sitting there was wondering if you were a co-parent and you were thinking about w where could you go to find some resources to assist your child or, and in particular books, uh, especially for that sort of early childhood background, which is where I come from, um, how, how would you find those? <laughs> and, uh, and so that's where I had my sort of moment of clarity as I was sitting uh, in the children's section with my son going, I wonder if this would be an opportunity um, to direct parents and families. So that's sort of why I'm here today, the intention and where that this little spark to reach out to Krista mm -hmm. sort of came from, just so you have the history and the context behind why why I reached out today, and um, and very appreciative of the opportunity to share with everyone. So, yeah, and I think it's a it's definitely a great thing that um, libraries could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with and extension offices have worked with libraries and lots of other projects, yep. and programs and things as well. Let's just get them All right. Thank so you. Now, yeah, once it's now, yeah, you should be able to use the keyboard. Great if it holds up for us. <laughs> we have a temperamental keyboard here, but we have a mouse backup. No problem. <laughs> uh, so, sort of, so the goals um, for today are, you know, what is co-parenting? Uh, I'll share a little bit about what are our current trends that we're seeing within our program. Uh, data is sort of helpful to to look at and, and make decisions from, and so I'll be happy to share with you that. And then I'm really hoping to sort of leave some time in the opportunity. So as as we first got started, please share. Um, any feedback or questions, comments, those types of things. Um, hoping to use the bulk of that time to talk about um, as little or as big as as we can sort of think about once once you have an opportunity to hear more about the program. So the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension, we offer co-parenting for successful kids. It is a research-based uh, class. We developed the course um, leveraging research that we knew was uh, best practices around co-parenting and how to uh, best support young children during that transition and their parents as well. Um, we offer it both on site at our local extension offices throughout the state and we also offer the program online. Uh, the goal of it is really to develop respectful and responsible uh, co-parenting. Uh, we, our course, as I was sharing, was is rooted in research, um, but the other part of our course is that we are a class that's approved by the Nebraska S Supreme Court um, as a basic parenting class. Um, the class is mandated. It is a, a state statute requirement for parents experiencing divorce, separation, or custody. Mm. Um, but we are we are one of the approved courses, and we we work closely with um, that administrative office to make sure that we continue to um, keep our course uh, current, informed, and and uh, very relevant for the topic. As shared, uh, our program content is really focused on the child. That's why actually our logo right there says co-parenting for successful kids. There are other co-parenting courses, um, but ours, which would is pretty unique because it's it's really focused on the child and um, we offer it online. We're, we're one of the few that offer online. We offer it in English and Spanish um, and participants can you know be able to take the course in their own home language but we it's, the class is approximately three hours. If they complete it on site we have an instructor um, all of our extension educators have a background. Uh, we have previous um, instructors and professors from the university who have taught the class. And we really work with co-parents to um, take that time to really reflect on, as they're going through this transition, how are they going to be able to support their child to be successful? And that's pretty much the goal of every parent, right? We, we really want our children to be successful. and. And so that, that's the main focus of the class. If they participate on, on site, they complete worksheets. We have a booklet and they go through it with the instructor. If they do it online, they complete quizzes and we actually have a journal where parents are able to enter in, uh, answer specific questions to sort of reflect around their transition and their process. And it's again, we, we have the questions linked to skills and strategies that we know are really effective for helping um, at that, helping reduce the stress for both child and parent at that time. 
the other thing is, is that we actually offer feedback. So extension educators, uh, there really is another person on the other side. And, and so it's he, not just you're doing an online course, and there's no interaction with any anyone else. That's good. Yeah, and that's what really makes our course unique. We've, uh, we have some really interesting data from our participants that say that they really value the instructor's feedback. You know, there's mm -hmm. opportunities to ask questions. Um, one of the questions we typically get asked about is, I'm noticing that my child is experiencing some grief. Can you point us in the right direction for resources? And so we're able to do that. Um, so yeah, their journal entries are really reviewed by extension educators and we really take our time to make sure that um, we're responding and providing feedback to co-parents who are taking the course. There is a cost to taking the course. Um, we certainly never turn anyone away from an inability to pay. Um, and we have scholarships available as well. So, um, and it's on really a sliding fee and our scholarship application is available on our website as well. So, and I'll have that contact information at the end, but the other thing that really makes our program content pretty unique is um, whether they register online or on site, we continue to provide resources afterwards. So it's not just a sort of one stop take a class and then move on. We, we continue to link with parents and have additional resources available to check in. And we actually have a UR Parent app that can be downloaded uh, through the App Store. Uh, if you have an iOS or an Android system, it doesn't matter, it's accessible. And uh, I, you can sign up for it and you get texts related to your child's development at, regardless of what, la what period of development they're at. <clears throat> so if they're for early childhood, it's very focused around early childhood. If you have an infant toddler, you know, strategies around how to calm a fussy baby, those types of things. Right, of course. Get into adolescence, how do you sort of nurture that autonomy and self-direction and all of those things. So, and we certainly include handouts and, and again, related resources that have been pretty vetted um, to make sure that it's good quality information. Here's just some examples if you'd like to see what it could look like. So um, on one side of the screen you have where it says Nebraska Resources Legal Support Services. Um, if the individual is in a high conflict transition, we have some resources there. Again, these are offered in both English and in Spanish too. So, um, and then on the other side there's the information um, where they're able to access on our website um, and see, you know, what, what does, um, what, where can a parent go to learn more if they have questions or things like that. So there's an example of just some of our additional resources. Uh, what we're noticing is an enrollment trend. So when the course force first started, uh, about 80% of our, our classes were online. But we've been seeing a shift, and I'll have some data to sort of show you in the next slide, but um, our enrollment, since, since 1999, we've had over 18,000 parents have participated in the course, and 42,000 uh, children have been impacted by that. And we've had participants from 85 of the 93 Nebraska counties participate in it. Here's just some of the data trends that we're seeing. So as I was sharing, you know, in 2011, we were 100% online. Um, then we started to see a shift. So, you know, 2012 half, then you can see in 2014, um, we were 80-20. That's where we've been. And actually, I just, just updated our numbers last week. I, uh, we are actually, for 2016, it was 93% online. Wow. Okay. So we're... Oh, the convenience of it, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. And I, and I share this information. How does it relate back to you? We have families who share with us and co-parents who share with us that they go to their local library and utilize the computers there to take the course. Mm -hmm. And that was another sort of moment that I was wondering, oh, are our local branches aware of, and are uh, throughout the state, that parents are actually coming in and taking this course there and, and using that as a resource. Um, so I, I hope we can talk a little bit about that too, how we can, for individuals who want to take the class online, um, because maybe the on-site class is not offered in their county, where we can direct mm -hmm. them if they do not have a computer easily accessible to them. So what, what are sort of the benefits for both on-site and online um, and sort of tracking, you know, here what, what we see for um, 
as a benefit for both co-parents and children. But again, it's research-based practices. You know, Extension is all about bringing research out into the field and, mm -hmm. and that's sort of we teach uh, and then partner uh, with, with others around how, how do you bring that information out into the field where it impacts. And Extension actually does that with children and families too. That's one of the areas um, that we're really trying to share as we work closely um, as the learning child team around that. Uh, for most participants, we've learned that this is their first parenting class, uh, and they learn a lot of information. I'll share a slide in a little bit from a quote from a parent who shared, said, I wish I had known about this class from the get-go, yeah. and she's, um, you know, very vulnerable in her quote, but she did share, share this was a real learning curve for her, um, and, and it really strengthened um, her families and, and understanding as a parent. Um, you know, knowing what's best for their for their children, and and most and most parents really do. Um, and then we also evaluate our programs, so we're constantly striving again to keep the program both relevant, rooted um, in what we know as research, and then responding to the feedback that we also receive from co-parents. We really do take the time to read their read through their feedback and and mm -hmm. the evaluation and use it to improve our program. So as I was sharing, I'll just leave this up for a little bit and give you a minute to sort of skim through it. But here's a, a comment from one of our class participants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wish this course was mandated before having <laughs> kids, yes. <laughs> I'm sure many parents would think that going into that blind is just when you're not worrying about divorce or anything at all, just yeah, and parent, parenting in general, we you know is a is an interesting journey to go on as a <laughs> young mother myself. You know, with my three year old, and have, he's now transitioning to preschool, and that's you know now that he's three and a half, <laughs> that whole thing. You uh, know, yeah. and so, uh, but being able to know, you know. Um, how do you best support a young child um, who might be experiencing grief? What are some of the appropriate ways for uh, disciplining and parenting styles and that can be effective even during uh, separation or custody or transition? Mm -hmm. And then the part that's really helpful about this is that very effective common sense materials. It's very practical uh, and, and so that you can take the information and really apply it right away. So here's where I'm hoping we can spend the bulk um, of this particular presentation. I am happy to continue the conversation afterwards too, especially for those who might be watching this after the fact. Um, please, please do not hesitate to call me and have conversation afterwards. Um, again, this could be as, as little as working closely with you to identify which books you have at your particular branch so that we can add them. Um, to our resources to say here are books that are available within Nebraska libraries that you can go to and you can check out yourself to use um, or you know if you're um, open and willing to having information on site and we can refer parents back to that uh, location if they're in that particular county and they need access to take a, um, the class online or um, something you know larger scale where we possibly look at you know creating some um, resources to be available and stationed there. So as I shared, we, we know parents are using computers at the local library. I literally walked a parent through this like two weeks ago and we were coordinating um, because she was going back and forth and taking the course and I was helping her through it. So we, we know we have participants who are going on site and using them. And we're happy to have them, you know, refer back to the local library. Definitely, you know, depending on what age of their child, to, to referring them back there to find books and those types of things. Um, <clears throat> within our class, we talk about magical, ordinary moments, and one of the things we suggest is to read with your child. Mm -hmm. That those are, that that is a magical moment with your child, and something seemingly ordinary is actually mm -hmm. quite quite magical and wonderful. So uh, and important for that bonding with the child and keeping things. Mm -hmm good and steady while turmoil may be happening elsewhere yeah. in the family. Yeah, that opportunity to bond and read books and uh, the other part of it is we would obviously like to build, being Nebraska, we're very Nebraskans, <laughs> and so building on local resources 
um, to check out materials and having materials available within um, local areas. And in one of the things I actually did uh, when I was there at my local library last night was I looked up the books on divorce. And you know, mm -hmm. and, and there was a few, there were a couple books there, but it was it was one of the other things I had kind of wondered is uh, when you want to go and look up those materials, you don't just go and say, I, I'm looking for these materials. Yeah. Um, and so how could we even sort of make that question a little bit easier and not so um, maybe um, intimidating to go and to ask for the parent. For the parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the bigger thing could be is possibly looking at some additional opportunities to partner, whether that's um, you know sharing of resources. We have NEB guides, um, when I say sharing of resources developed at UNL, that we have had instructors. Um, we have extension specialists who have a, um, their background um, in family or children. And so they review all of these articles. It's a very much rigorous peer reviewed. And so we could even provide those um, and have them available and accessible, maybe in a little kit of some sort that parents would be able mm -hmm. to access when they're checking out books or something like that. So uh, again, I'm happy to have a conversation on what this could look like. But um, please, if you have any questions or comments, mm -hmm. here's an opportunity to do that. And um, Um, has anybody out there, I was, I was actually curious, has anybody out there know, known of anyone coming into your library is doing this? Um, have you had experience helping with anybody no, who has um, gone through this program? I, as you said, you've got 93% of your people who need to take this class are doing it online. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those you probably are in the public library. Um, how, many, how many classes is 93? How many individuals, or is that how you count, or is it how many... So access to the how many have accessed the course? We we usually count it by how many have accessed the course uh, okay. by participants. Right. So we know that for all of our participants for that year, ninety three percent of them took the mm -hmm. class online. Okay. So if anybody has had any encounters with this or any ideas about it, let us know in your chat. Um, something I was wondering about about the partnering. You said you do have the on site. Mm -hmm. You do still do in person classes. Would that be something that you would do at a public library, or do you guys just use your own offices around the yep. stage? So, um, so far, we've only been using our, our extension offices for mm -hmm. the most part. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> simply just because that's where extension offices are and we're educators. And they're there. Yeah, and they're they there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we used to have it in, I think, more spaces, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but again, we've been seeing the shift. Right, yeah. Uh, so it's this balance, but there's opportunities to offer in other places that may be more accessible to families, certainly open to sort of exploring that too and what that might look like. And I know there people do, when you're talking about like going to college and taking college courses or mm -hmm. school courses, people do learn better online, some do better online, some do better in person. Mm -hmm. um, I think the interaction with the online is important, though, too, because we do that here. We have classes that we teach basic skills classes to oh, librarians. Sure. It's the same kind of thing. It's online, but there's always an instructor there mm -hmm. that's monitoring every single class. And if people have questions and they participate in the dis they've got discussion boards and things, they yep. participate in that as well. So it makes it more than just like a um, um, mindless screen that you're sure. <laughs> interacting with. You know there's other people in there, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it, it is not passive. Exactly. Yeah. And many times it's just a sort of mm -hmm. click and move. It is this back and forth interactive. Um, our on site course, we also have a, interpreters available. So if a parent mm -hmm. would um, need an interpreter, we are, our class is happy to accommodate that mm -hmm. with proper notice. We are able to find mm -hmm. someone. I know you said you have Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. Is is there a, have there been requests for any other languages? I know we have a lot of other. Mm -hmm. um, um, communities that you know, Vietnamese and mm -hmm. that are big, at least here in Lincoln. <laughs> um, has there been any requests for any other languages? Or so, far so far, we have not. Mm -hmm. okay. Not yet. We we certainly um, have it on our radar. You know, if mm -hmm. there are additional, um, <clears throat> where we typically have other languages pop up as for our on-site class. That's usually where we get right. an interpreter who requests um, or a different language if it's not primarily Spanish. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Yeah. Cool. 
If um, individuals are interested in learning more about the program, they can visit uh, it's child.unl.edu. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you can go to to learn more information about co-parenting for successful kids. A little bit more about the Learning Child team. It is a team of extension educators um, beyond just co-parenting. Co-parenting is my, my particular program area of focus, but we have other extension educators on the Learning Child team. And uh, again, our focus is birth through third grade, and but that also includes family. We're very focused on that young child. Um, but we do everything from off offering child care provider training, um, to um, coaching, uh, those types of things. We also have uh, different extension educators who do some pretty unique things online too. We've got mm -hmm. some uh, pretty remarkable um, um, long distance online opportunities. So it's, there's a little bit more than just co-parenting. That's my particular area that I'm passionate and focused on. But And again, we have extension educators throughout um, each county on the Learning Child team, so you can certainly either look specific mm -hmm. to your branch and see who's your extension educator. I'm a statewide appointment uh, because the nature of co-parenting, you know, is statewide. But there are lots of uh, opportunities um, to sort of explore on that website. Yeah, looking at the site here, I was just looking at it on the laptop yeah. here. Lots of the different areas they've, um, I like they've got specific things for military families, yep. which is a whole other um, situation to deal with healthy kids. And I saw, oh, there's something else I saw about um, grandparenting. <laughs> Obviously, if the grandparents have to be more participating in yep. the raising of children just because of situations. Um, we have a pretty robust health and nutrition program, mm -hmm. so lots of uh, go active, get play, uh, very robust nature. Explorer program too. We have um, extension educators who talk a lot about going outside and bringing the mm -hmm. outside into the classroom or into the child care program or into the home program if you're a family home provider. So, yeah, cool. Okay. Here's my um, personal information. So please <clears throat> feel free to email me at any time. Um, typically pretty quick in responding. That is my direct office line, so you can call me there. We certainly have a more toll-free number but I for our co-parenting course, but mm -hmm. um, if you're really interested in co-parenting materials, you can call me and I can uh, mail you co-parenting information too and send it directly out to you. We're going to be doing our big mid-year mailing here in mm -hmm. June um, where we share a lot of our information, so if you'd like to get on that, I'd be more than happy to send that to you. But or if you'd like to talk about partnering opportunities, like I said, I'm statewide, so wherever you're mm -hmm. at, <laughs> I am more than happy. You'd be the person to contact. I am the person to contact and happy to, to connect with you. Great, yeah. So if anybody, you have any questions about the program or what you would do as far as um, partnering with them, type into the questions section so you can get your questions answered now um, while you're here. We do have one um, that just got typed in here, too, that I'll start with. Um, well, it sounds like your program is Nebraska specific. Yes, of course, being through UNL. Yep. <laughs> um, and she says, I'm a youth services librarian in Virginia. Great. Um, I don't know if classes like yours are mandated in our state, but it sounds like a great program. That'd be something to look into. Okay. Um, she wants to know, are you aware of any similar, similar programs in other states mm -hmm. um, that are out there? Yes. Is there, there's a, like, do other states do similar? We, we actually have partnerships with two other states oh, okay. <clears throat> who utilize our course material. So we are more than happy to partner, um, and they are with actually two other universities too. So, mm -hmm. and we work closely with with uh, them to provide this information into their own state. I'm not as familiar if it's mandated in Virginia or not. Yeah. We do have individuals who take our course from out of state. So I've had people from that was what she's. Our second mm -hmm. question was, could our residents access your program and materials online? Yep. So is so is the online are the online is the online version of the class restricted just to Nebraska? No, people? it is not. We've had other people nice. from out of state um, who have, have used it. So um, you are certainly welcome to follow up with me and we can have a conversation a little further around that. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to even point you in the right direction to around who mm -hmm. to contact then if you're interested in, in um, assessing if it's uh, accepted as a uh, uh, parenting course within Virginia right. specific. But yeah. So the course then itself then obviously is not 
I mean, the, the fact that we have things that are mandated for Nebraska is Nebraska specific, but the course content, content is not Nebraska specific. No. It's broad enough that anybody could use it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've had other people adapt the content and made it a little bit maybe more unique for their particular oh, sure. state yeah. uh, and then tweak their resources for their own state and, and things right. like that. So, yeah, happy to follow up about that. So yeah, so share just like libraries. So yeah. Share the information. Yeah, it's not like it's copyright protected or any of that, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, we you, the course material. Um, what program does the online course? What we're on today? Moodle. Moodle. Oh, okay. We're That's on a we Moodle platform. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can only access the court course content obviously within the class because mm -hmm. that that particular. Um, information you know is just accessible through the course and that's sort of unique to the program but mm -hmm. um, but we have resources available online that are accessible free to access those types of things yeah yeah Moodle is a great um, program um, there's lots of different online uh, university type things you can use blackboard mm -hmm. and other ones um, some are easier to use than others we found Moodle is pretty good yeah um, we've been using it for us. that's actually the basic skills classes that we have for our librarians in the state oh, yeah. um, we use Moodle for it sure they're online uh, modules um, on different topics in librarianship to keep up to speed on what we're doing continuing education and things like that um, not don't usually have too many problems with people being able to get in log in and mm -hmm. use it so it pretty, works pretty well I think we're happy with it. We're even extending into other say, other classes that we're teaching now. Yeah, it's a great platform <laughs> to sort of get that content and that information. Yeah. So any other questions, go ahead and type them in. We can um, ask them now, or obviously Linda's uh, contact info is there. Um, so a question I was thinking of, the to, this is through the UNL Extension Office. Mm -hmm. So the funds to run this program, does that come from um, the university or how does uh, it, or is it part because the state is mandating these classes? Are the, the, the supports, is, do they no. help make them happen? Or? No. <laughs> no, it would be nice. <laughs> Each co-parenting course is offered independently of its own. Oh, okay. So the course is pretty self-sustaining. So there's no budget really that you. That's what I was thinking about the budget to mm -hmm. you put on the courses and materials yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, every and each co-parenting class charges something a little bit different. Mm, okay. Yeah, because you did mention there was cost, but then mm -hmm. there is also scholarships. Yes, because obviously offer. we are a university, so we oh, okay. we have things that are accessible and available in scholarship mm -hmm. and sliding fee. So we won't turn mm -hmm. anyone away from an inability to take a course, especially yeah. in this case. When yeah. They, Making them take it, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> typically our, our course costs fifty dollars, and of course those mm -hmm. funds all go back into the program, which is what helps mm -hmm. the class continue to maintain itself and um, run the program and all of those different things. So and you said it, the it's a three week. How long does it take typically, to go through it? It just or? depends. So it's three hours on site. Okay. The online mm -hmm. class we it our average says it could take you 30 days to complete. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the individual. How long you want to spend How long sitting there spend. working through yep. it. Okay. So if you do the on-site one, it's just three hours and that's it and you're and done. And then you're done. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But, our, um, which, you know, is a lot of information to take in in three it is. hours. Yeah. I yeah. Think especially if you can then in the online version, it's, it's go at your own pace uh -huh. kind of thing. You could take it up to 30 days to get through it all. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not bad for 50 bucks. <laughs> All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions right now. All right. Um, if so, then I think we can wrap it up. Any last words, anything else you want to share before we do uh, wrap up for this morning's show? No, yeah. I don't think so. Just thank you all uh, for your time this morning and, and uh, your openness to sort of hear a little bit more about it. Um, as I share, please do not mm -hmm. hesitate to call me if you're interested in any other possible opportunities to sort of think about um, offering co-parenting information either at your local branch or what I could be doing to provide um, additional resources available mm -hmm. even just to have it there. I know many of you have uh, sections with community resources and newsletters oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, as I said I spend a lot of time at my local <laughs> library with my son and so uh, certainly familiar with how you have lots of information there available so I'd be more than happy to send you information. You can shoot me an email um, with your address or if you want to, to you know continue the conversation after this please don't mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I was going to say this is a great resource for libraries across the state. Definitely, I know there's always new services and programs are trying to think of how to serve the community and you already know these people are coming into the library right. to do this and how do you help support them um, and create get the resources together and figure out what are the, the books and the journal articles and the things that, that could help them um, and that can take time. Um, but Linda will do that part for you. Yeah, <laughs> That's the great thing. You can just contact her and say, we know people need this in the community. Yep. Give us the resources, and then it's just kind of already done. Mm -hmm. And um, all you've got to do is kind of guide them to it, which is what we generally sure. you know, are all about. So I strongly recommend yeah, reaching out to her and get this into your libraries. Um, and even if you're not sure, you, some of these people are probably coming in, like you said, it, you know, don't want to talk to the librarian about it sure. necessarily, but they just want the resources to you know that it's there. Um, it's a privacy issue or an embarrassment issue, you never know, especially in small towns and whatnot. Um, get the resources out there, have the um, flyers, handouts, whatever available mm -hmm. to them, um, and Linda can get that off to you so that you can just make it available and they can use your yep. library. Yeah, and it's nice to know that you have materials that are sort of rooted in best practices and research too. Mm -hmm. right. And I, and that's the thing too. I'm sure it's hard. Librarians, we don't we don't study generally child development and things like that, mm -hmm. but you do, so you know yeah. <laughs> these are the good ones. These are the not so good ones. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and our again, our program goal is really focused around the child in a way that's mm -hmm. respectful and responsive and. Um, so yes, please, and, and, and certainly if you are interested, like you were saying, in, in having those materials there or being a spot that we can refer parents to mm -hmm. and say we, this, if you're looking for um, a place to go and take the class, we know that your local library is familiar mm -hmm. with it and they are happy to have you come there and use their computers. Yeah, So and public library having this university research level of um, information available to them is a really great partnership, yeah. I think. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nobody typed in any desperate questions you had right now, so I think we'll wrap it up for today. You've got Linda's contact info. Reach out to her. Let her know what you'd like to um, work with her on. Um, so we'll um, officially wrap up for today. We are recording the show. So um, the recording will be available later, probably later this afternoon. Okay. I'll give you guys all a link to that. I'll let you know, too, if you Wonderful. want to share it. Um, like I said, all of our recordings are out there free. Um, I've got her presentation here, the PowerPoint, so you'll have that as well. And I have been saving the um, links that we were mentioning, the, oh, thank you. the main page for the um, learning child, learning child, child child.unl.edu as well as the specific subpage, you know, there's lots of stuff in that page for the what we were just talking about today, co the co-parenting. Um, and then a link to the information about the um, app, the UR uh, Parent app. Great. There's a specific page out there that I linked to as well, so you can get sort of more information about that after the fact. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh, thanks. Thank you for coming through. So I'm going to oh, grab back control here and we hit escape down Happily. the bottom and do it this way. Trying to find there we go. All right, so um, that will officially wrap it up for today's show. Um, and it will be posted on our website. This is um, the Library Commission's website, nlc.nebraska.gov, um, where we do have our Encompass Live page off here, but um, you can just Google us. So far, Encompass Live, we're the only thing called that on the internet. So if you Google Encompass Live, we come up. That's it. That's awesome. one. <laughs> so far, nobody else call anything this for us, please. <laughs> um, so you, can, you can see it's off of our NLC website. Um, Encompass Live. So um, the recording will be available right here. These are upcoming shows coming up the rest of May. Um, but here is where our archive will be. This is where all of our other previous shows are archived. Um, this is the one from a few weeks ago. We had uh, the recording, presentation, links. You'll have the same thing for today's show available for you. Um, it'll be up on here. I'll send you guys all a direct link when it's ready and available. Um, I'm at the mercy of um, YouTube and how quickly they will process our um, recording and everything. Sure. But usually it's done by the same day. So that will be where those will be. Uh, next week's show this is, is Nebraska Libraries on the Web. We just added this to the schedule. It wasn't up there previously. We're still working out some details on it. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we do offer free um, hosting of free web of websites for free for public libraries across the state. 
It's called our Nebraska Libraries on the Web program. Um, WordPress based, we do the hosting. It doesn't cost you anything, just your time to maintain your website. Um, Craig Lefteroff, who is our technology innovation librarian, will be with us next week to talk about the program. So if you are a library looking for a website, if you don't have one, if you want to upgrade your current one, you're just looking for a change, um, you want something um, easy to maintain, quick to set up, and under your own control, rather than potentially your city or your county, I know sometimes that's where the library is situated, um, check in with our show next week to see how you can uh, participate in the program. I believe we've got at least 50 libraries, um, over 50 libraries in the state on um, the Nebraska libraries in the web so far. So please do sign up for that show and any of our other future shows coming up. We've got all our Mays um, booked, and I'm working on um, sessions for May, June and July and future ones, of course. So just keep an eye on our website. You'll see all the new ones as I um, confirm them added to our schedule. Um, and Compass Live is also on Facebook. You can see up here we have a Facebook link, so you can pop over there if you are a big Facebook user. And we're going to do the, yeah. No, I don't want to log in right now. Um, and you can um, see what's going on on the show. You can see here I have a reminder about today's show. Um, reminders when previous recordings are available are all on here. So if you are big on Facebook, please do give us a like, and you will be notified um, through those that route. Um, of what's going on with Encompass Live. Right. Other than that, I think that will wrap it up for today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Linda. This so is much. really great. I'm glad to get this information out there. Yeah. I'm glad that you reached out to me to, to share it because this is, I think, a good thing for libraries. To yep. More partnerships, more things you can do to um, to not have to do, you know, get someone else to do the work for you, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> get their information out. That's what we're all about is partnering and community and um, helping with whatever they need out there. Sure. And this is a great program. They've already got set up, ready to go. Yep. For you. And they're coming into your library anyways, whether you know it or not. Yeah. <laughs> they know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you very much, and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Thanks, Bye -bye. everyone. Bye-bye.